In this video, we're going to look at how eigenvalues and eigenvectors can be used to solve differential equations. So here's the setup. Let x1 through xn be differentiable functions of t. Our goal is to be able to solve a system of differential equations of this form. So we have x1 prime equals a11x1 plus a12x2 and so forth plus a1nxn. Then x2 prime equals a21x1 plus a22x2 and so forth plus a2nxn and so forth all the way through to xn prime equals an1x1 plus an2x2 and so forth plus anxn where all of these a's are constants. We're going to define x to be the vector of functions x1, x2 through xn. Then x prime would be the vector of functions x1 prime, x2 prime, and so forth through xn prime. And let a be the matrix containing a11, then a12, and so forth, a1n. Going down, we have a21, a22, a2n, all the way through to an1, an2, through to ann. Then the system of differential equations can be abbreviated as x prime equals a times the vector x. We say that a solution to this system of differential equations is a collection of functions x1, x2 through xn that make each of the equations true simultaneously. Our goal here is to be able to find solutions to these systems of differential equations. Let's start off with some easy examples. First example, let's start off with just one function and one equation. So let's have x1 prime equals maybe 5x1. I'm going to start by rewriting this differential equation as dx1 dt is equal to 5x1. These types of differential equations are called separable differential equations because I can write all of the x1s on one side and all of the t's on the other side. So I'll rewrite this as 1 over x1 dx1 equals 5 dt. At this point, what I can do is integrate both sides and get integral of 1 over x1 dx1 equals integral of 5 dt. On the left, when we integrate, we get ln of absolute value of x1. And on the right, we get 5t plus some constant c. I can exponentiate both sides to get absolute value of x1 equals e to the 5t plus c. Using an exponential rule, I can write this as e to the c times e to the 5t. Next, I can get rid of the absolute values on the left-hand side by saying that the right-hand side could be positive or negative e to the c, e to the 5t. Now, this plus or minus e to the c here is just a constant, so I'm just going to relabel it as c. So, my solution is x1 equals some constant c times e to the 5t. Now, I can check that this is indeed a solution because when I plug it back in the differential equation, I get x1 prime equals 5c e to the 5t, and that is 5 times my x1. So my solution x1 equals c e to the 5t does satisfy this differential equation. Let's look now at an example where I have two equations and two functions. So let's say I have the system x1 prime equals negative 2x1 and x2 prime equals 3x2. We can rewrite this slightly and write this as x1 prime equals negative 2x1 plus 0x2s and then x2 prime equals 0x1 plus 3x2. Using the notation that I mentioned earlier, I can write this as x prime is equal to the matrix negative 2, 0, 0, 3, x. Now if I'm just looking at the first equation here, this is a separable differential equation, just like before, dx1 dt equals negative 2x1. It's separable, so I can write this as 1 over x1 dx1 equals negative 2 dt. Both sides to get integral of 1 over x1 dx1 equals integral of negative 2 dt. And again, I have ln of absolute value of x1 equals negative 2t plus c. 
exponentiate both sides, giving me absolute value of x1 equals e to the negative 2t plus c. Get rid of the absolute values and rewrite the exponential. I get x1 equals plus or minus e to the c, e to the negative 2t. Again, I'll group these constants together and relabel it as c1. So I would say that x1 equals c1 e to the negative 2t. But I'm not done yet. I don't have a complete solution. A solution requires something for x1 and x2. So I need to also find x2. But I can do that using the second equation here. Following the same steps, you should get that x2 equals c2 e to the 3t. So now I do have a solution. I would write that my solution is x equals, well, it's composed of x1 and x2. x1 is c1 e to the negative 2t, and x2 is c2 e to the 3t. I can write this as c1 e to the negative 2t 0 plus 0 c2 e to the 3t, and then write it as c1 times the vector 1, 0 e to the negative 2t plus c2 times the vector 0, 1 e to the 3t. You'll see why I'm doing this later on. But if you look at the matrix, you might notice that I have a negative 2 here and an e to the negative 2t here. One thing to note is that negative 2 is an eigenvalue for this matrix, and it has a corresponding eigenvector 1, 0. The 3 here is also an eigenvalue for the matrix, and we see an e to the 3t here. And 0, 1 is an eigenvector that corresponds to the eigenvalue 3. Let's now look at the following system of differential equations x1 prime equals x1 minus 3x2, and x2 prime equals 2x2. I can rewrite the system as x prime equals 1, negative 3, 0, 2, times the vector x. If this matrix was a diagonal matrix, then we could approach it like we did in our last example, and we would be able to find the solution easily. So one approach that we can take is to try to diagonalize this. Since this matrix is triangular, its eigenvalues are the entries on its diagonal. So the eigenvalues are lambda equals 1 and 2. Let's find their corresponding eigenspaces. So for lambda equals 1, I want to find a null space of 0, negative 3, 0, 1. This matrix row reduces to 0, 1, 0, 0. And so the eigenspace is the span of the vector 1, 0. For lambda equals 2, I want to find a null space of negative 1, negative 3, 0, 0. This row reduces to 1, 3, 0, 0. And so the eigenspace is the span of the vector negative 3, 1. So the diagonalization of 1, negative 3, 0, 2 is P, D, P inverse, where P is the matrix 1, 0, negative 3, 1, and D is the diagonal matrix 1, 0, 0, 2. If we calculate the inverse of P, we get P inverse equals 1, 3, 0, 1. Now let's return to our original system of differential equations. We have x prime equals, now instead of using the original matrix 1, negative 3, 0, 2, I'm going to write in P, D, P inverse times x. Now let's make a substitution. Substitute y equals P inverse x. Essentially what I'm doing here is I'm making a change of coordinates. I have y1, y2 equals 1, 3, 0, 1 times x1, x2, which means that y1 equals x1 plus 3x2, and y2 is equal to x2. Now, if I take the derivative of these equations with respect to y, I get y1 prime equals x1 prime plus 3x2 prime, and y2 prime equals 
x2 prime. So what we have here is y1 prime y2 prime is equal to 1, 3, 0, 1 times x1 prime x2 prime, which can be written as y prime equals p inverse x prime. So let's make these substitutions into our system of differential equations. We have x prime equals p d y. If I multiply p inverse to both sides, I have p inverse x prime equals p inverse p d y, which simplifies as y prime equals d y. So using a change of coordinates, we now have a diagonal matrix right here and we can solve the system of differential equations just like we did in the previous example. So as we continue onto this new page, I wrote down some of the key pieces of information. Right now we want to solve the system of differential equations y prime equals d, which is the diagonal matrix 1, 0, 0, 2 times y. From our previous example, we saw that the solution looks something like this. It looks like y equals c1 times 1, 0, e to the t plus c2, 0, 1, e to the 2t. If you are unsure about how I got this solution, check back on the previous example to understand the process. Now this can also be written as the vector c1, e to the t, and c2, e to the 2t, which means that y1 is c1, e to the t, and y2 is c2, e to the 2t. But we want solutions for x's, so we need to change this back in terms of x's using this relation. If y is equal to p inverse x, then multiplying by p on both sides gives me x is equal to p times y. So x is equal to 1, negative 3, 0, 1 times y. So our vector x1, x2 is equal to 1, negative 3, 0, 1 times y1, y2, or x1, x2 is equal to y1 minus 3y2 and then y2. So my solution is x1 equals y1, which is c1 e to the t minus 3y2, which is c2 e to the 2t, and x2 is equal to y2, which is c2 e to the 2t. If I want to express my solution like I did in the previous example, I would write that my solution is x equals c1 times 1, 0 e to the t plus c2, negative 3, 1 e to the 2t. So again, notice the pattern that for the eigenvalue lambda equals 1, we have e to the t, and the eigenvector 1, 0 shows up right here. And for the eigenvalue lambda equals 2, I have e to the 2t, and the eigenvector negative 3, 1 shows up here. This is going to be the pattern in general. I'll state this result in the next video, and we'll also look at some more examples.